I've collected all of these degrees, which means I have to pay them back. And I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that with following this script and I was so unhappy because I was not able to make the impact that I thought you know when you're going through school all of your professors are feeding you this dream of like you know you're gonna go change the world and then once you are in the real world you realize how much red tape there is and how much it's really not about um, changing lives on the ground per se but the appearance of changing lives is a little bit more important than actually touching individual people. So that just was, they, I no longer wanted to follow that script. What's up everybody, this is Abby here and I have my friend Yannick Duke with us today. She is a fabulous, I'm gonna let her explain everything that she is because I'm still learning. I think one of the <laughs> things I appreciate about uh, having these conversations with people is I just get to catch up for all the time that we haven't spoke. So Yannick, let me stop talking and please introduce yourself, who you are, what you do. Hey everyone, my name is Yannick. I am a content creator, that's what you can call me. I'm a content creator, which means that I create funny videos, sometimes fashion, a little bit of mom and skincare, videos on the internet, primarily YouTube, Instagram, and now your girl's on TikTok, can you believe it? So <laughs> that is what I do. So for the most part, I am lucky enough to really just get to connect with a lot of women internationally through these various platforms that we don't have to pay for, but get to enjoy. And that's amazing. So I, I've seen uh, your pages and you are killing the game. Let me say that. So uh, that, <laughs> that's wonderful. So, okay, I guess we're all in our 30s-ish, right? Somewhere yeah. around there, possibly. You know? <laughs> uh, I, I was speaking to somebody earlier and I think that we're actually probably the last generation who was following what I like to call the script, right? The whole go to school, get a good job or get a good, a good government job and, and so on and so forth and, and you know, yeah. bang out your 30, 40 years at your job and then retire. So I'm going to ask you, because I feel like because we are the last generation that did it, what was your script? What was the original plan or instructions that you were given? <laughs> oh, oh, do we have to go there? Okay, so my, I come from a Jamaican household. I am Jamaican, born and raised. Um, I migrated to the United States when I was in elementary school. So I grew up with this immigrant's version of the American dream, right? And so the plan was I was going to be the first person in our household who came here, studied in the United States, did their, you know, all of their degrees, collected as many degrees as possible and then go on get my it was it had to be in the medical field okay if you know anything about a traditional Jamaican household when they move to the United States you have to study medicine they don't care if it's doctor nursing whatever just some form of medicine healthcare because healthcare is stable right? It, it, healthcare is never going to go away. So that was my script. I, you know, I got my master's in public health. I tried to be a doctor, but that didn't work out for me. Um, and then I switched to nursing and I realized how much I, I was not going to enjoy that either. So I settled in public health. But if you know anything about public health, um, that's primarily government funded, which means depending on the administration that has been elected, depends on how much funding public health gets. So one year after my master's degree, I was making $17 an hour and I already was married, already had a child. So I have a household to take care of. $17 an hour is not, is not that great. And then the next administration came in and they cut the funding. So it was like, okay, at this point, as much as I would love to make a difference, because, you know, there's so much bureaucracy involved in that, um, I have to be able to sustain myself. And I've collected all of these degrees, which means I have to pay them back. And I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that with following this script and I was so unhappy because I was not 
able to make the impact that I thought, you know, when you're going through school, all of your professors are feeding you this dream of like, you know, you're going to go change the world. And then once you are in the real world, you realize how much red tape there is and how much is really not about um, changing lives on the ground per se, but the appearance of changing lives is a little bit more important than actually touching individual people. So that just was, they. I no longer wanted to follow that script. <laughs> I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, I think probably around 2014, 2015 is when I started my entrepreneurial journey that looks a lot different than what we were taught to follow, right? I mean, obviously you you know this because I mean, we look at you, we see where you are right now. You're not even in the United States at this point. And so I think we, we kind of have an understanding of what that looks like not to follow the script, right? For sure, for sure, for sure. And, you know, I come from Caribbean descent as well. Um, <laughs> so I, I can I can understand that pressure of people wanting you to be like, hey, you got to do the things that our parents wanted us to do, but we couldn't do. So carrying on, you know, that legacy and wanting to, to do that for your family is is a lot of is a lot of pressure. But when it comes down to it, we have a responsibility to ourselves as well, and we're pleasantly surprising, I would say, our parents and our aunts and uncles would be like, hmm, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't know you can sustain life doing that. And, and to be honest, to be fair to them, it didn't exist. You know, right. it didn't exist for them. So all of this is right. still brand, I think I was watching a movie, I was watching a movie yesterday and this gentleman was an artist and his father was just like, so did you look into that job yet? And he was just like, my job is my art, right? And by the end of the movie, the dad was like, I knew you could do it, son. And he was like, no, you no, you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But I'll, I'll let you have it because I know you right. wanted the best for me, but no, you didn't. <laughs> right, they have the best intentions, but for the era that we're in right now, they just don't have the answers. They can't really help us navigate this space that we're in. You know, I think, like you said, we were the generation where um, right after we were finishing college, there was no jobs <laughs> for us to go into that would sustain us and allow us to leave our parents' home, right? Like, I know so many of my classmates after undergrad had to go back home. They didn't really have a choice because there, there were no good paying jobs for the vast majority of people in the traditional sense of what jobs looked like, right? And then, you know, we didn't have pensions. That, that wasn't available to us. And then you turn around and we had so much student loan debt. Our generation really paved the way of like, we are in a new unknown and nobody can really help us give or give us the guiding steps of how to navigate that. When I tell you I literally went back to school in order to survive, like I went and got my master's to yeah. get a loan so I could pay rent. Yeah. And I prolonged what could have been a year program to two so I could survive. And then after that, went to AmeriCorps to volunteer and that was the highest paying job I had to date. Crazy. With a master's degree. Crazy. So I feel you. Yeah. So, so let, let's transition. As, as we are now figuring out a new way, creating new path, creating new, I don't even know if we can call it careers, but new opportunities to generate income, right? Uh, to generate, you know, more, more wealth and recognition and things of that nature. Tell us more about what you're doing on the content creation side or how you even got into it and, and how you got to the place and the space that you are today. Well, I actually fell into content creation, right? It was not something that I was looking for or looking to do. Uh, you know, we all went through the pandemic and my skin just kind of went crazy. 
I, I, just, I don't know. It's, I completely broke out. I couldn't figure out what was going on with my skin. And, you know, we all go to Google first. And it was in the middle of the pandemic. So it wasn't like I had access to a dermatologist anyway. So my Google searches led me to diagnose myself. And what I found was I was dealing with fungal acne. So it's not your traditional type of acne where you can just slap on your traditional acne medication actually that would make it worse and from all of my like youtubing because i'm a big youtuber i watch a lot of youtube but all of my youtubing all of my google searches nothing that i was following was helping so i came across like one miracle product sulfur supernatural nothing crazy to it sulfur and it changed my skin and i was just like you know I don't see anybody out there talking about this. I'm going to just create a video just so people can know, you know, if you're dealing with the same thing that I'm dealing with, this is what has helped me. And that video is at, I think it's almost at half a million views at this point. Right. And what happened was people were watching that video and commenting and asking more questions. So it was like the natural thing to do is to create another video to answer their questions. And so even if you go back to watch that first video, it's crappy. I mean, <laughs> the quality is not that great. I'm a little bit out of focus. Like, you know, you can tell I literally was just like, cool, let me cut on this camera and be like, hey y'all, if you're dealing with this, this is what you should do. Um, and then from there, it just kind of naturally evolved into um, me having some sort of influence. So all I really did was found a problem that I personally had, put on my camera to tell people, if you're dealing with this, this is what I use. And from there, I really just answer questions as they come. And so that kind of just naturally evolved into other aspects of my life, motherhood, fashion, because I love fashion. I love shopping. So people just naturally start asking you for that. And I think uh, when I speak to other women, because my audience is primarily women, when I speak to other women who desire to be content creators, um, I think we overreach and we're looking for or pinpoint where our influence is or how can I be influential? I think a lot of the times you're already influential in your circle. Right. Like I'm sure there's already you have friends or coworkers or family members who come to you to ask you various things. And so if you look in those areas where you already have influence, it kind of can give you a spot of where you can start creating your content around and then not to overthink it. Just go. Just start. And as we see, like even with content creation and with business, that is yeah. the the base level of of any successful or unsuccessful person it's it's yeah. literally finding an issue and giving solutions yeah. <laughs> finding a problem and and fixing it and sharing that information with the world i think when people get caught up is just like i they they don't everybody said they don't do it for the right reasons true. you know what i'm saying so many people especially with content creation i want to go viral and i want to make all this money and all this other stuff and they're looking for the recognition and the clout and it's not about the people. It's not about their circle. It's about hey, I just need to. I want to be. I want to be this person without being the person right. that they they right. need to be. They don't have true value to offer. And and once you don't have true value, you're gonna you're gonna get burnt out from your efforts because you don't have the heart for it. Like I mean, when you're saying like I I have an issue, I need to share it. And I think everybody's first video is probably really trash. But it's just <laughs> like this is this is my honest opinion. I'm not trying to like. I have an issue. It's, a, it's bothering me, and I want to share it, and 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 so on and so forth. So so that's awesome. Uh, to just to start with, what you care about, share that information, and yeah. whoever comes across it comes across it. And even I would, the caveat to this is, I think a lot of people put too much weight on what value is, because value doesn't necessarily have to be just teaching someone something value can be which is what i'm finding on instagram because my instagram platform is very different from my youtube platform right so on instagram i'm finding that the value that i bring to the table there is just allowing other women in particular to know you know 
every day can be made magical for you in your own way. And it's really has this more of an entertainment kind of aspect to it. So where, you know, even if you're having a really rough day or everything in your life is going crazy, when you come to my Instagram, it's relatable, but it's funny. And so the value there is more of like a lightheartedness, uh, a break from my reality, like a reprieve. And, and not necessarily I'm coming to Unique's Instagram to learn some in-depth course on marketing, you know? <laughs> so in, in which is interesting, I say that because um, some of the other content creators that I speak to who are just trying to get started, they really get hung up on what is my value? Like, what am I teaching? Like, sometimes it's not even that deep. Sometimes your value is a laugh. I'm going to make you laugh. I'm going to make you feel a little happy in this instance. Sometimes your value is I, when you come to me, you feel like I'm your best friend and then I'm going to listen and I'm going to relate. And that is value. So it's not just like, what course can I create? What is going to be my ebook? It doesn't necessarily have to be just education, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where people are also missing that too when it comes to being like, are you this person that you are that can continue doing it? One of the things for me is I just don't, I don't want to act, you know, yeah. like somebody for the rest of my life. So if it's yeah. not a part of my natural character, it, it, it becomes, it becomes work. Yeah. If you got to, you know, wake up and literally try to do all of this stuff, that can be, so I, I would encourage people to, you know, spend time with, who are you? What do you like? What do yeah. you enjoy? Which is something that I've had to explore just, just in general, just be like, people, I hate the, I hate the question. What do you do for fun? And I'm like, who is fun? What is that? <laughs> but, 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 but to carry on, what, what, um, so my question is, um, do you content create full time now or do you still have another like job or anything? Oh, no, I still work. I still work. Um, I'm working from home. So I work from home, uh, traditional nine to six because, you know, you got to take your hour for lunch. So traditional nine to six. I'm still at work clocking in. Uh, <laughs> but I find that some I've made this mistake in the past where I jumped ship from my job too early and it puts a lot of strain and pressure on your business to produce financially every single month that I don't, especially with content creation, I do not want to be in a position where I am taking on brand deals to pay bills and not because I really align with the brand. And that's a tricky area to be in when you have bills to pay right? So I am taking this very slowly. I'm approaching this very different than I have on any other entrepreneurial thing that I've tried. Because uh, again, I kind of fell into it. I'm, so I'm still learning all of the financial aspects or the business aspects that come with content creation. And so I can easily, so just to be transparent, I am currently making more money through content creation that I do on my nine to five. However, <laughs> I want to be in a better place where um, I can feel like, you know, push comes to shove. I made no money this month because I turned down all of the brand deals because I they didn't align with me at all. I'm still going to be okay. I don't feel like I'm at that point yet. So until I feel like I'm at that point, I'm going to stay at my job because my job pays my bills. Content creation is, you know, to reinvest back into, you know, getting better equipment, being able to hire and invest in other people. That's what that is doing right now. Because, um, you know, I don't want to be that influencer who is just always pushing products. And you can tell there's no real connection to this brand. They're just trying to make money. They're here for the brand deal. Mm, no, that's just not my goal. <laughs> and that and that's real because I think people equate, you know, your followers with your money and be like, oh man, yeah. she got to be, you know, making money hand over foot and and all this other stuff. So and yeah. and I appreciate, I appreciate you mentioning that you're not 
you, you want to be in a place where you don't have to take every brand deal. Exactly. If it's a company that you don't really necessarily agree with, then it's just like, thank you, but no thank you, which is yeah. one of the things that I'm, you know, venturing or, you know, just trying to figure out, which is why I've, I've, I'm taking my time with the things that I'm, you know, aligning myself with and creating myself. So just be like, I don't want to just do this for a check. Do I need a check? Yes. Yes, yes. I do. Very much but, yes. <laughs> yes. I do want to check. Yes, I do need I do need work. I do need opportunities. But I do not want to look up and see myself doing random things for a check. Yeah. Um, there's a master class. I can't remember the young lady's name at the moment. But uh, pretty much she just said with the things that she participates in that if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. Mm. And I was just like, I, I like I like that. Mm in a sense, to, to make sure that it's something that you're excited about, something that you really want to work with. And if not, being in a position or establishing within yourself that you can say no. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so, so I, I, I really appreciate that. So uh, let, let's, let's talk about uh, how overcoming like fear and challenges. So you said you fell into content creation. Yeah. And as you were falling, did you ever be like, I don't, what is going on? How is this <laughs> happening? <laughs> Oh, for sure. Um, I think because we're dealing with the internet, um, you're, everyone wants to go viral, right? And you don't understand what comes with going viral until it happens. So, you know, recently I've had a couple viral moments. Um, we're talking millions of views on, you know, just one piece of content. And it opens you up to people who don't know you. It opens you up to people who automatically carry biases or prejudices when they see you based on what you look like, based on what you sound like, um, and you really don't have any control over how these people interpret your content. And so for me, that's where a lot of my fear comes in. So if you look at my content, you won't really see my children. You might see like the back of their head sometimes, or, you know, they'll make a cameo. But even though I talk a lot about motherhood, I'm not like a family vlogger or my kids don't take front row in my content because a lot of my fear is rooted in like people addressing my children negatively or, you know, we have crazy people in the world trying to find them. Um, and then I also don't really showcase my marriage on my platform either. So I'll talk about it, but you also won't see like couple travel vlog. No, because again, that's another place where people feel entitled to once you do share those things, they feel entitled to know everything that's happening, every decision that you're making. And I had to learn how to navigate that space because that that fear that I had with like allowing people into those portions of my life really held me back in the beginning because I didn't um I was so uncomfortable with allowing people access to my children or my marriage that I just wouldn't talk about it. So I wouldn't talk about motherhood at all. I wouldn't talk about being a wife. I was primarily focused on skincare. But as we said earlier, skincare, I love skincare, but it is not something that I want to talk about every single day. And that's what's going to happen when you open yourself up onto the internet. Whatever you decide to talk about, people are going to ask you about and ask you to create content about every single day. And so I was starting to not like skincare. Like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's like, y'all, I already made a video about this. Just go back, watch the video, guys. But you have to realize, especially if you go viral for a piece of content, you have to be ready to create that same content or talk about that same topic over and over again. And so naturally I did have to start opening up and allowing everyone into other parts of my life. It just had to, it has to be the way that I'm comfortable with. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about, you know, an issue that I'm having in my marriage or that I overcame in my marriage, which is what I find 
my comfort to be. Like, I'll talk to you after I figured it out. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, um, I might not, I'm not at a place yet where I'm comfortable saying, hey, currently, this is what's happening. No, um, maybe in the future, that comfort might come. But for right now, that's just how I'm dealing with the fear. I'm not letting it stop me because then I'm, I'm going to end up putting myself in a box. That's what my fear was doing. And I don't want to be in a box. I want to be able to talk about anything that has to do with me. Like my brand is me. It's not skincare. It's not motherhood. It's me. So today, if I want to talk to you guys about this Zara haul, we're going to talk about Zara. And tomorrow, if I'm telling you, you know, I didn't meal prep again, y'all, so I'm at Chipotle. That is what we're going to talk about. <laughs> and it's okay because I've structured my platform to be me and not necessarily just one aspect of my life, um, which is what fair was, that's what the fair was doing. And it was no bueno, because again, I wouldn't show up every day. If I only had to talk about skincare, I would not show up every day. Mm. And I think uh, what I what I like about what you're saying, because I, I told you, like every conversation I have is just me, just getting more information, just yeah. gaining more knowledge and wisdom when it comes down to it, because you know I, that's something that I struggle with as well that I I have a sense of humor, right? But I am fearful of creating content that has a sense of humor because I don't want to just be the funny girl, the one yeah. who makes that face or the one who does this or does that. Like, yeah. I, I, I have concerns for people who only do that. And there's some really funny individuals that put on different characters. And I, I can't help but think, like, in 20 years, how sick and tired are they going to be to be asked to be like, do that thing you do. Like, you know, think about Urkel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we barely say that man's name, Jalen. You know what I'm saying? We're just like, Who we say, is that? Say, say the phrase. Did I do that? Right. You know, so I'm, I'm conscious of the things that I, that I do because of the requests that are going to continue to come for that. So I can appreciate you, you bringing that out and making sure that you are, you know, being your true self so that you can mm -hmm. branch off and do other things and your followers are not going to be just like who is that right oh i don't i didn't see that coming so so that's right. dope that's dope you so have I, to be true to you though like if you have a goofy side you have to show it because surprisingly it wasn't until i started showing that like more silly goofy side of me that's when people started to connect with me because you can tell, like, if I look at your content, it's funny, but naturally, as human beings, we are discerning. So we can look at somebody that we have never seen before and look at their content and go, that's not her. She's pretending, right? Like, oh, that's not really her. And, and so it's when you start implementing your true self, that's when people really start connecting with you. So even though you don't want to be known for just being funny I guarantee you if you start putting a little bit of humor into your content people will relate and then they will branch off to see what other things you offer too mm -mm. that's dope I love it thank you for that so so we, we spent a good amount of time together and I want to make sure that I continue to get you know these tips for our listeners here so yeah. um, you can take it however you want to go you know, you can do the content creation. You can do, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter. But what are three tips that you would give to anybody in, in general, be it? Yeah, I'm going to let you have it. Okay. Three tips. I want to concentrate on like, okay, if you're thinking about starting content creation or some kind of business, the first thing that I would say is to start even, especially with content creation, even if you don't post that first video, record it. Because most of the times it's starting that first like step of action that's the hardest. And once it's like, okay, well, I've recorded it. Okay, now post it. You know, it's like just start and do that action. Whatever, whatever action it is that you're scared about, just do it. I don't care if you like, start a new Instagram page and just throw up videos there. Just just start. And you'll find that, you know, yes, practice makes perfect. So if you don't practice, if you don't keep uploading videos, you won't get to that place where you are perfect or you feel, I don't know if perfect is the right word, but you feel like, you know, your content is at a good quality. 
you will get there unless you do it. Because a lot of times people get stuck on the, okay, well, I have to wait until I know how to edit or I have the best camera and I have lighting figured out before I start. Where most times, again, go back and watch my first video. <laughs> it's not until you start and you keep on doing that you get better. So that's two tips. One, start. Two, practice makes perfect. So just keep on going and you'll get there. And then the third thing is do not be afraid to just be you. I said that a little bit earlier, but it's so true. You have to be completely you because like we said, you don't want to look up in five years pretending to be somebody and now you have all of these followers who are here for this character that you've built instead of who you truly are that's where you start having issues with you know identity um you, you know you might start feeling a little bit depressed <laughs> or because you're putting on a show and you're you have all of these people falling in love with your facade and not you it's just so much easier to just go ahead create content that you love because they're going to ask you to keep doing it. So you have to be able to love it. So create content that you love. Be completely true with you. So people can love you for who you are. So you never fall into that like, okay, well, I know y'all came here for this. But we're going to now go in this direction. Because I don't want to be that anymore. That's where you go wrong. My number one tip when people ask me for advice um, in my DMs. It's always don't focus on going viral. Focus on how you can be truly you. Because the last thing that you want to do and the worst thing you want to do is to go viral for something you don't care about and don't ever want to do again. Because that's going to be people's first impressions of you. And so if it's not you and it's something that you don't want to do again, you're going to hate yourself for it. Mm. That's amazing. I, I do have one additional question because we know when it comes to the, the interwebs, it pretty yeah. much always wins. So because they're out there and I want to address them, what do you do for the trolls? What do you do with the people who just have too much time on their hands? I delete their comment and I block them. All right. That's now. it. I'm not carrying that energy with me. You You have to. Why am I going to argue with somebody who has already they've already decided in their heads this is what she is and this is what she meant i'm not arguing with you i'm i'm that's a waste of my time and now i have to bring that energy home with me to people who i love who don't even know you we don't know you so i just block and delete them and i keep it moving i'm not i don't even allow myself to get caught up in those emotions that come with trolls cuz they'll try it they really will it's just, and I can't control other people's behaviors. I can only control my own actions and how I receive something. So I don't even receive it. That's their burden, not mine. Mm, mm, mm. Just short and sweet. I love it. I love it. Period. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to make sure that you please give us all the places and spaces to where we can follow you, support you, continue to, to consume uh, all this wonderful content that you're putting out. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I make it really easy for you guys. It's Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, and everywhere you can find me at Yanique Duke. So it's just my name, Y-A-N-I-Q-U-E, Duke, all platforms. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. And like I said, we're looking forward to seeing more wonderful things for you and wishing you all the best uh, in your future endeavors and, and connections and, and masterpieces that you put together and all the best to you and your family as well. Thank you for having me, Abby. It was great catching thank you, up thank with you. you. You too. So for all of you out there, all of our listeners, all of our watchers and supporters, thank you so much. If you are a unicorn yourself or you know anybody, I'd love to continue to have a conversation with those people. So go ahead and tag them below and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.